Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're in my office at the building block table that I keep here for when I get new kits in. And uh, today I'm excited to show you the new kit that Kobe has released. Uh, this one can be built as either Pennsylvania class battleship, Pennsylvania or Arizona, uh, specifically in their 1941 configurations. Uh, more or less how they look during the attack on Pearl Harbor. And we're going to use this to do a ship comparison video between uh, New Jersey and Arizona, which is long overdue on this channel. It's been much requested. First off, this episode is a giveaway. Kobe has given us two of these models of Arizona, valued about $200, $250, depending on where you get them from, that uh, we are able to give away to fans like you. There is a link in the description below if you would like to throw your name in for a random drawing of one of these two kits. We will do the drawing on March 31st, 2023. So be sure to check your inboxes and your spam folders. Sometimes when you get an email from a business, Battleship New Jersey, that says, you just won a fabulous prize, uh, it goes straight to your spam folder for whatever reason. Uh, so be sure to check your spam folder to see if you won this and follow all the instructions in the uh, link in the description below to be able to get a chance. So first off, I wanted to show you uh, this piece of the Arizona, which we have in the museum's collection. And this is the first time that a Kobe model of Arizona has ever been able to touch a piece of the real Arizona. So this is me christening my new build. And you know what else I'll do? Here are the other two kits we are going to be giving away at the end of the month. You will have a chance to win the second or the third Kobe Arizona kit that have ever touched real steel from the Battleship Arizona. These are likely now the only three kits like this anywhere in the world. The thing I love the most about these Kobe kits is how accurate they are. When I was growing up, I built a kit very similar to this. This is the, uh, the old Ravel kit. Uh, and I built a kit of uh, an Iowa class battleship. The problem with these kits that are very accessible to the public is they're what's known as box scale. Ravel made them to be the same size as their standard size box, which meant they were not in scale with each other. And so my absolute favorite thing about the Kobe kits is their 1300 scale. So I can take my Kobe Arizona here and I can see just what a monstrous difference there is between this Arizona and this Iowa class battleship. So now you can see just the massive size difference between battleship design 1914 and Battleship Design 1940. You can hardly tell that they're, they're built to do the same purpose by the same country. They are so different. The Pennsylvania class battleships are the second class of standard type super dreadnoughts built by the United States Navy. They make a couple of key improvements over the preceding Nevada class battleships. Uh, this includes going to four propellers, which will be standard on American battleships from Pennsylvania all the way through the Iowa class. They continue the trend of having four turrets, two forward and two aft, which is preferred by American designers. And they increase the firepower over the Nevadas from 10 turrets with twin mounts over triples uh, into 12 uh, barrels with triples on all the turrets. You can see New Jersey limited by the Washington Naval Treaty, uh, has had to delete that aftermost turret. She does still retain four propellers. Whereas the standard type battleships have a single rudder for a homogeneous tactical radius, Iowa class battleships with their huge, huge length to beam ratio add uh, a double rudder like the other American fast battleships. Perhaps the biggest difference you can notice between these two models is the number of guns. Arizona may have more main battery guns, but they're smaller. 
but when it comes to counting out the secondary battery, it's no contest. Look at how this ship just bristles with anti-aircraft guns. Arizona, at the time of the attack on Pearl Harbor, had, in addition to the 12 14-inch guns, 10 5-inch 51 caliber guns in casemates down here. Those are single-purpose anti-torpedo boat guns. And eight 5-inch 25 caliber guns for the anti-aircraft roll. Additionally, she had eight water-cooled 50 caliber machine guns in the ship's superstructure, in what are uh, commonly referred to as bird baths. Further, she was supposed to have four quadruple 1.1-inch uh, anti-aircraft guns, the so-called Chicago pianos. Unfortunately, there were not enough of them in production, so she was supposed to have those replaced with four 3-inch guns. But that work was never done either, so Arizona, in fact, had zero of these medium range guns at the time of the attack on Pearl Harbor, even though they were designed to be there. Uh, likewise, the fire control directors for those guns was not on board. Another critical missing piece, Arizona had a mount for an air search radar, uh, CXAM uh, or XCAM, pardon my dyslexia, uh, right here. However, the antenna itself had not been installed by the time of the attack. Notice New Jersey coming online just two years later, less than two full years after the attack on Pearl Harbor, has a battery of air search radars, surface search radars, fire control radars. Um, you name it, this ship had the most modern electronics suite. Arizona is still entirely reliant on what you can visually observe from the ship itself. In terms of spotting, Arizona was retrofitted later in her career with a fantail catapult that's trainable and a turret top count, uh, catapult, which is trainable insofar as you can rotate the gun turret. She would typically carry three aircraft. And while there's no hangar for them, they are wisely stored here on the fantail. And notice they have cranes associated with them for lifting those aircraft onto and off of the deck. The aft crane has this. The turret top one has the two boat cranes that can be used either for the midship's boat park or the uh, turret mounted float planes. Likewise, Battleship New Jersey has no hangar, was designed to carry three aircraft, but usually only carried two uh, and has similar turning catapults on her fantail. She is a much wider uh, aft end, whereas Arizona, well, look at her. She's thick the whole way through. Um, so there's, there's just more room to put this on the fantail and any damage that these lightly built aircraft stuffed with explosives in the form of gasoline might take is only gonna damage the, the fantail area. It's not gonna do any serious damage. Arizona looked considerably different as built than she does in this configuration that we have for you to display. As built, uh, she had cage masts, her anti-aircraft battery was significantly reduced, and most of her guns were one level down here in casemates in the hull. And you can still see the curves on this ship where those casemates were mounted. And that is what absolutely blows me away about this model. It does not look like a standard building block kit, they have all of these complex curves built into the hull of the ship. In between 1929 and 1931, both Pennsylvania and Arizona are modernized um, to include torpedo blisters, which you can see modeled in the kit here, to move all those guns up to this superstructure position, uh, to get these tripods instead of these cage masts, and a number of other minor things, including some additional armor, uh, and other stuff like that. One uh, interesting thing about this kit is the pop of color that it gives you. Arizona was the Battleship Division I flagship. For Division I, the turret tops are painted red. 
for uh, being the first ship in the line, all three turret tops are painted red. Pennsylvania was the last ship in Division Two, so her turrets should be white, white, blue. The colors are red, white, blue, then black and yellow. And so the forward two turrets are always painted with your division's color. One red, two white, three blue, four black, five yellow. Uh, and then the aft turret is your position in the line. These pre-war battleship divisions tended to be three ships. Uh, so it would be red for ship one, two for uh, white for ship two, and blue for ship three. Why is this painted like this? Is that not obvious for aircraft overhead? Yes, that's the whole point. How do the three aircraft from Arizona figure out which ship they're supposed to return to compared to uh, all the other nearly identical standard type battleships? So that's why these are painted like this. They are in camouflage for a surface engagement. Unfortunately, they ended up in an aerial attack. And with the prevalence of aircraft during World War II, you see that uh, New Jersey's deck is painted this ocean blue color, as well as the uh, turret tops, compared to Arizona, which is far, far more visible from the air. Very much the result of wartime experience. This kit allows you to build either Pennsylvania or Arizona, comes with different nameplates for both, and uh, different turret colors and some other uh, pieces that are different. And then you can make additional modifications like I have to reflect uh, this ship as Arizona on December 7th. I've even got her naval jack flying to show that she's in port, as opposed to flying the American flag from the mainmast and taking the jack down. So unlike a traditional model that you build where you glue everything together and it is then like that forever, if tomorrow I decide I wanna change the date that this model depicts, the ship that this model depicts, or the way that the flags are or anything else, I can real easily make those changes. Especially since I'm a Kobe master builder. You wanna be a master builder? If you shoot down five aircraft, that makes you an ace. So I'm saying if you've built five Kobe battleships, that'll make you a master builder. A 2,500 piece kit like this usually takes me over 10 hours to complete. So it is plenty of uh, time engaged with the kit. And then once you've completed this, according to what the rule book says, this one's so big, it comes with two rule books, then you can make modifications to it. Uh, again, this is the, uh, I think it's called the executive edition. This is the version where you can build it both ways, which means you have a bunch of extra pieces left at the end, which allows you to modify the kit. Both Pennsylvania and Arizona were present during the attack on Pearl Harbor. Pennsylvania, being in dry dock, managed to survive the attack relatively unscathed and was returned to service pretty early on in 1942. Arizona, on the other hand, uh, is completely destroyed by a bomb penetrating her magazine, which uh, leads to the loss of the ship. She's decommissioned by December 29th of 1941, and uh, because of her age and the amount of damage, she's never returned to service. One thing I would love to do with this kit that I haven't had the time to yet is take this kit and do what we master builders call kit bashing, and take a, a bunch of the pieces off of this and take the Pennsylvania kit version of this build, uh, which shows her on December 7th, and update it to show what she looked like. She is the flagship of Task Force One, the battleship division protecting the American West Coast. Or in 1945, when she is the last American battleship damaged during World War II when she takes a torpedo off Okinawa. And the great thing about these kits is if you are a master builder and you happen to have a couple of them, then you can take these pieces and move them around and really uh, modify the time periods depicted by the kits. 
So um, enough gushing about the models, a little bit more comparison. Uh, Arizona is 608 feet long as built. That's about 25 feet longer than the preceding Nevada and Oklahoma. So just a little bit of an expansion there. She uh, displaces about 30,000 tons as built, which is about 4,000 tons more than the preceding class of ships. Uh, and she will get up to about 34,000 tons all told after her uh, modernization. She is built to be 97 feet wide, although she gets torpedo blisters very similar to the ones that we saw on USS Texas installed at the same time. Uh, and those are installed between 1929 and 1931. And again, those are actually modeled in the kit and you can see where those uh, torpedo blisters are slapped on and where they terminate at each end. This ship had 31,500 shaft horsepower as built. And that was enough to move her at just over 21 knots, the standard speed for American battleships at that time. And it's amazing to me, um, the, the required increase in shaft horsepower, you're going from 31,000 on a Pennsylvania class battleship up to 212,000, a seven times increase and for all that extra speed, you get 12 extra knots. You're about 50% faster uh, than this ship. And that's not just a question of horsepower. It also takes a significantly longer, narrower, they, they end up being about the same width, but, but a significantly higher length to beam ratio to achieve that. And you really can tell the differences in designs from these two kits. Pennsylvania class battleships have a single funnel a relatively small area between their gun turrets for engineering equipment, uh, and a very, uh, very low length to beam ratio compared to an Iowa class battleship where it's significantly more distance between the turrets for the engineering spaces. You've got funnels trunking, into, trunking from multiple boilers uh, and a hull form designed entirely for speed. That, is a stable gun platform. This is an absolute thoroughbred racehorse. Another really interesting difference, Pennsylvania class battleships have four 500 kilowatt turbo generators creating electrical power for the ship. An Iowa class battleship has eight 1,250,000 uh, kilowatt, an Iowa class battleship has eight 1,250 kilowatt turbo generators for a total of 10,000 versus 2,000. Uh, this ship just does not have the electrical generation capabilities as built to run the electrically powered anti-aircraft guns, the radar antennas, all the electronics uh, that an Iowa class battleship does. And it really shows you uh, the difference in uh, approximately 25 years of battleship design and development, a single human generation between this old tub and this thoroughbred. And it's not only a difference in capabilities, it's a difference in the mission set that leads to those capabilities. Arizona is designed with the various American colonies in the Pacific in mind. She can go about 6,000 nautical miles uh, at 12 knots whereas Iowa-class battleships are designed to go 15,000 nautical miles at 15 knots. Uh, they are designed to operate in an environment where the Japanese empire has removed the American colonial possessions and she has to operate in the enemy's backyard to take those uh, possessions back. She can stay at sea significantly longer uh, and stay in the fight significantly longer. However, uh, one area where there's relative similarity is in the armor. Pennsylvania class battleships have a 13 and a half inch armored belt, which compares pretty favorably to a 12 inch belt on an Iowa class battleship. Ours is angled, uh, ours is internal, theirs is external. So at the end of the day, it's pretty similar. Uh, they have 13 inch bulkheads. We've only got 11 inch bulkheads. However, a projectile punching through the nose of Arizona has considerably less distance to go before it hits the forward armored bulkhead here than a projectile punching through the nose of New Jersey. 
So New Jersey can afford a thinner bulkhead. Uh, the turret face plates on Arizona are 18 inches, uh, a little bit thicker even than on New Jersey, even though they've got a lighter caliber gun. The bar bed is only 13 inches versus up to 17 for New Jersey. And the conning tower is 16 inches, again, versus 17 and some change on New Jersey. Uh, the, the real major difference, and the thing that ends up being important uh, for the design of this ship and her eventual loss, is Arizona is designed with three inches of armor spread across three different decks. Additional two inches was added to that during her major uh, rebuild in the late 20s, early 30s. Iowa-class battleships have uh, six inches in their main armored deck, and uh, in reality, it is closer to eight inches spread between three different decks as opposed to the five inches that you get on Arizona for that. Uh, that just could not resist bombs or long-range plunging shells the way an Iowa-class battleship was designed to. But again, that is a factor of the period in which she's designed. A ship like this would not have been kept in service as long without the Washington Naval Treaty stopping new battleship construction and requiring older battleships to be modernized. And so many of the generations of ships that would have given you the difference between this and this were not allowed to be built. And this ship was still in service um, in World War II. And her sister ship ends up being in service all the way up until 1945 and even survives two atomic bomb blasts. That's how tough these ships are under the right circumstances. Arizona was in service for 25 years, from around 1916 until 1941. Pennsylvania had four years on that, 29 years total. New Jersey, the longest serving of the Iowa-class battleships, was only in active service for about 21 years. So a shorter length of time overall than Arizona. And she required several expensive rebuilds to keep her going during that time, uh, whereas Arizona really only had the one big modernization in her career. Pennsylvania uh, gets a second one into her late World War II configuration. So at the end of the day, it's no comparison between which of these vessels is the better one, especially in a World War II environment at the end of the usable lifespan of these ships. However, the value that the government got out of Arizona and her sister ship Pennsylvania arguably exceeds what they were able to get out of any of the Iowa-class battleships. So remember to check the link in the description below for uh, a way to win one of these two spare kits that we have that has touched a piece of Arizona. That's not something you can get from uh, Kobe's website. Or if you want a guaranteed uh, chance of getting one of these kits, there's a link in the description below to Kobe's website so you can buy one of your own. It will look very nice on the mantle next to the New Jersey kit that you've presumably already got. Which of these two ships do you think provided better service? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. In particular, we would like to thank Kobe for supporting the museum and our channel uh, with models like this that we can use in these videos. If you are interested in your own, remember, link in the description below. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.